In this video, we look at animation nodes and how to easily create an animation with your models. You will need the latest release of Blender and you can get that here at blender.org. First, come to the download page and down below to go experimental. These builds have the latest features, but they may have bugs and are not recommended to use in production. Click Download Blender Experimental. Choose the version for your operating system. I'm going to download the Windows version. Now save the zipped file in an easy to find location. That will take a few minutes, but I'll skip the download process and open up that folder. This folder is compressed, so it needs to be unzipped. I'll use the Zip7 application for handling this on Windows. That will take a few moments. Once the extraction is complete, double click inside and locate the .exe file. This here, double click and Blender will run from this folder with no installation necessary. This will open Blender into the default scene. Now we need to get the animation nodes add-on. I can open a web browser. Search animation nodes and their website should appear in search. Open this up and in here you'll find the download button. The different versions are listed and I'll be using the latest at this time. Just note there will be regular changes to animation nodes so some things may look different in your version. Download this and save the file somewhere permanent so that when it's installed you can easily manage uninstalling and updating to the latest version. Let's open back up Blender. We can now install the animation nodes add-on. So come to the edit menu and open preferences. Open the add-ons tab. Here we can click install. Navigate to where you have saved the add-on. This is a zipped file but Blender will handle the unzipping on installation. So click install add-on. This will get listed once installed. Put a check mark in the box to enable it. Expand for further information. When you want to get the latest version, uninstall the add-on first. These instructions here show the steps. Disable the add-on first by removing the check mark from the box and save preferences. Preferences do save automatically by default. Then restart Blender and remove the add-on. One more add-on we do need to enable, and that's the Node Wrangler add-on. So search this here. Put a check mark to enable it. This add-on adds extra functionality to the Node Editor and is worth enabling. With this, let's close preferences. We can begin up top and right-click on the Layout tab. We can duplicate this tab. Double-click and rename it Animation Nodes. So that way we have a dedicated tab to modify with a new editor layout. Next, we can change the editor layout so we have a 3D view, animation nodes editor and a timeline all stacked on top of one another. Hover the cursor on the bottom left until the plus icon appears. Then left click and drag up and split this editor. Now we can click into the editor type menu and in here choose the animation nodes editor. Now we have a 3D view, an animation nodes and timeline editor ready to begin. In the 3D view, press A and select everything. Press X and delete. We're now ready to import the FBX file and this can be found on my website. In the asset page, scroll down to the animation nodes area. Click and the download will begin. This is a zipped file and needs to be unzipped. Save this somewhere and we can unzip and import this in a moment. I can drag in the folder where this file is saved, right click and from zip7 extract files. We are now ready to import into Blender. So let's open back up Blender. Press F4 and in the import menu we can choose FBX. This opens Blender's file browser and you can navigate to the FBX file using search. Select the FBX file and click import FBX. This building is from an earlier tutorial where I used the Archimesh add-on to create it. Check out that video here if you are interested in creating the model. 
before we start using the objects with the animation nodes, there are a couple of things to note. All modifiers should be applied at this stage. Any non-uniform transforms should be cleared out and the origins set at geometry. Also, each object you want to modify with animation nodes should be in their own collection. In our case, we only need one collection at the moment and these objects are already inside a collection from import. We can, however, rename this collection to collection underscore building. Let's right click on this collection and choose select objects. That will select all the objects inside the collection. Now in the node editor, we can click new and create a new node tree. Let's rename this node tree building. Animation nodes will always update and that's displayed over here on the top left. Press N to open the sidebar. Here you can decide how the node tree is executed. I'm going to uncheck always and enable these three options. This way only when changes on the node tree, the frame or any property changes will the tree update to the viewport. You can decide whether you want it evaluating always or just on changes. On the sidebar in the 3D view, the shortcut is N, we have the animation nodes tab once the add-on is enabled. We need to reference these objects initial position. We do that by clicking new and creating a new ID key. We can name this building positions. The data type will be transforms. Click OK. Press shift and select one of the objects. Now on the add-on in the building's position, click from current transform and store the location data for these objects. This sets up a transform ID key for the building and we can use that in the node tree. From the add-on, come to object and collection and here we want the collection info node. This node will return the objects in the collection building. In the collection field, click and choose the building collection. This will get all the objects inside this collection. Next, we need an object ID key node. ID keys can store custom values of an object. In this case, they will be the current transform properties we stored. If we click here, we can choose those building positions. Now we can take all the objects in the collection and plug this into the object input of the ID node. Now we want an object matrix output node. Get this from the object menu here. We can plug all the objects into the object input. This moves all the building parts back to world origin. So we need to take our stored building transforms and restore to rebuild. To control the objects positions, we can use an offset matrix node. Drop this here to connect. Then we can enable the transforms we want to control. In this case, we can switch on the location, rotation and scale transforms. So if we click and drag in any of the location fields, we can move the building in that direction. I'm going to input 100 in the Z location and zero out the rest. Zoom out in the scene to view this. The fall off slider then will allow us control the animation. So we can use a delay fall off node. We can find that in the fall off menu. Choose the delay fall off. Drop that in here and connect it up to the fall off input. The time property can take a time info node. This will return the current frame and control the fall off with a change on the timeline. So from the add menu in animation, we can add a time info node. Now if we scrub along the timeline, we can see the building is translated along the positive Z axis. What we want to see is a reverse direction and for that we need to invert the direction. We can add an invert node from the add menu in falloff and select this. Drop that between the delay falloff and the offset matrix nodes. This will reverse the direction the building is translating. We can click the timeline back to the beginning now. Press the spacebar to play and the building now gets put together from the top down. This finishes about the 110 frame mark, so pause this video and drag the scrubber to the end. Press Ctrl plus end and we'll finish the animation here. 
In the scale field, we can input minus three in the X, Y, and Z fields. That way, it will begin small and increase in size as it gets into position. We can change the interpolation type from the drop down, and I find exponential works well here. This base is coming in rather late and in through the building. We can change the direction and have this come in from the back, and the two front pieces come in from the front. What we can do is create a new node tree, rename it node tree base. Now create a third node tree and rename this node tree front. Now we need to add the objects we want included in the new node groups into collections. So in the scene, we can first select the base, press M and create a new collection, rename this collection base. Now add that in here. Select the front and the steps now, press M and create another collection. Rename this one collection front and add these in here. Now, if we go back to the building node tree, drag select all these nodes, you can change the selection type from the toolbar here. Left click and choose select box. With these selected, press Ctrl plus C and copy. Now open the base tree. Ctrl V and paste this node tree in here. In the collection info node, we can change this to collection base. We want this base coming from the back, so clear out the Z location and input minus 100 in the X location field. We can then open the front node tree and paste this in here. Change the collection to the front. Now we can zero out the Z location. We can input 100 for the X direction, so this comes from the front. Now play the animation and take a look. That was a quick demo of animation nodes and how to manipulate object transform data quickly and easily to create a simple animation. That's it for the video and I hope you found it useful.